What's, What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Don't Tell Mom podcast. We are here with Danny Malloy. Yeah, we've got we've got a, uh, a special special guest. I've already I, I like this guy. Yeah, I like this we're guy. This excited cool. about today. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say if you didn't? No, well, I don't. Yeah. That'd be awkward. I want to know, <laughs> right? Yeah, we got this guy. I don't know about this guy. Yeah. <laughs> we got a special guest, Danny. I don't like him. <laughs> All, right. All right, Danny, go. <laughs> you're in. You're on. No, um, no. The more y'all hear him talk, you'll kind of guess and probably. Probably assume where he's from. Yeah, um, we were just kind of giving each other hard times about our accents, but um, yeah, this is a crazy, crazy story y'all are about to hear. Yeah, um, I'm excited. I, I just from doing the, some of the research. By the way, I'm Cullen. Sorry, this is my sister Brittany. Hey, we're the do of the Don't Tell My Podcast. If you're new, subscribe. Yes, and favorite this podcast. But um, anyway, anything that's, and that's everything the CTA goes there. Here, Call folks. to action. Got to get that in. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, no, just from doing some research, I. Basically, you got sucked into the lifestyle that we've been covering over the past few podcasts of mm-hmm. addiction, and I ended up jumping on a Greyhound, I heard, and um, heading down south, and here you are in our basement. That's right. <laughs> in the basement. Who would have thought? <laughs> All the way from Boston. That's right. So tell us a little bit about yourself yeah. and where you came from and what, what's your deal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. Love the 90s theme. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't Thank tell you. mom. And yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people that want to say, the babysitter's dead. Yes, so I'll everybody. do it for everyone else <laughs> out there in the YouTube world. I did it. I said it. We're um, trying to push that search engine up. Like it's Every time I search don't tell mom, that's all that comes up yes, I want right. Don't Tell Mom podcast up above <laughs> <Yes>. that <laughs> one day one day work. one day yes yes thank you so so born and raised in Boston Massachusetts um my mother and father got divorced um and I always like to say this uh up front you know a lot of stuff I'm going to talk about is uh it's kind of sad you know when you think back on it now and I don't tell the story for pity at all mm-hmm. I tell the story because it's true it's what really happened uh, right. to me in my life so Mother and father got divorced. My mother moved down south. Uh, my father had custody of me. There was kind of a battle for that, and I ended up in Boston with him. Okay. And my mother ended up in uh, down south. Um, so that was when I was very young, before I can even remember. Um, and from an early age, you know, my father b- began drinking. Um, he's an alcoholic. It, it just runs in my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember experiencing some things where it seemed kind of off. Um, and, you know, uh, there were times where um, my father would disappear for days, you know, yeah. three, four days at a time. And I'm left in the apartment, no food, don't mm. know. I'm scared. I'm a kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The light, the, and I, I didn't want to get up and shut the lights off, turn them on. I was just too scared, yeah. you know. And my aunt would find me up there because she lived downstairs in the, on the second, you know, it was a three-family yeah. uh, house. And she, and I would go down there and just crying, like, I don't know where mm-hmm. he's at. I got nothing to eat. Like, can I come in, you know? Yeah. And so eventually, long story short, I mean, I experienced a lot of stuff like that. Like, you know, he would take me downtown Boston mm-hmm. as a kid. and To the bars and stuff? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. I grew up in the bars. Yeah. I mean... He'd give me a roll of quarters, you know, yeah. go play mm-hmm. the arcade games, and then he would disappear. Yeah. And he'd, I'd be alone in downtown Boston with no money, mm-hmm. don't know my address, yeah. and I would have to find a police officer and say, all I know is my name, and I don't know how to get home. Dang. You know? Really? And I remember growing up like this, and during that time, uh, I remember just, you know, kind of saying, you know, if God exists, then he must hate me. You know, yeah. why would I have to go through any of this stuff? So long story short, my aunt, uh, who lived downstairs, said, told my father, like, I'm taking him because you're just probably going to, he's going to, you're going to kill him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no way. He would drive drunk and all this other stuff. Yeah. And uh, so when I was about six or seven or so, my aunt, who lived downstairs, she took me. And like, from that point on, she raised me. Even yeah. right now, I look at her as my mother, right. you know. Um, and really, when I look back at that, you know, she gave her life for me. She wasn't married and she made, she never married because she took me and said, I'm going to focus on raising him and trying to raise him right. Wow. That's strong. Yeah. Yeah. And she just sacrificed so much. I appreciate her. I wish I could show that more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is your real mom in the picture at all? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll kind of get into some of that as we 
progress. Don't jump the gun. Okay, okay, okay. I want to know it all. Don't rush me. I'm so intrigued. I made that mistake before. Uh, I just, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. I'm all about the 90s, 90s baby. Yeah, y'all yeah. should see his outfit. We'll get to that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We will. Don't jump the gun, Don't Colin. Jump the gun. <laughs> Colin, you're going too fast. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Slow it down. Um, so, so my aunt, you know, th- uh, thinking I needed structure, which I uh, definitely did, because at this point, I'm six or seven, I'm off the rails. Like, I'm, I'm in trouble all the time. Yeah. When I look back now, I could see I was reaching out. I, I was crying mm-hmm. out for some attention. I-, I didn't, I couldn't get it. Well, my aunt, you know, put me in Catholic school. Okay. So we're talking Catholic church, Boston, Massachusetts. Think about the time frame so you can mm-hmm. think yeah. about what was That'll going on up out. there. Yeah. So oh, needless to say, I was um, molested multiple times by oh, a priest. Oh, man. Um, and a lot of kids at that same school were. And they, you know, I remember one day that saying, where did, uh, I won't say his name, but where did Father so-and-so go? And they said, uh, well, he was an alcoholic, so we moved him, you know, he, we moved him to a different parish. He was on molesting all the kids. Oh, like, and it was a known thing, and the Catholic Church covered it up and all that crap. Just moved him around. Well, I was part of that. Like, and it was just this trauma after trauma in my life as a kid. And, you know, if you asked me when I was little, I would have said, because I, one of my uncles was in prison for heroin. I mean, it was just all throughout my whole family, mm-hmm. almost everyone besides my aunt. My, a couple of my aunts. I have three aunts, but none of them, it wasn't like that with them. But I would always say to people, like, I'm never going to be like that. I will yeah. never be like that right. because I see it, you know? Yeah. I knew what AA was. when I was in an AA meeting when I was five years old, yeah. you know? I was, I was there looking like, what is this? Yeah. And so, you know, fast forward, of course, all that stuff happens to me. I get into public high school. This game on. Right. It's the 90s. Right. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We're talking about the 90s. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the 90s for me were, it was... All right, I said I would never want to be like that, but I really like the way weed makes me feel. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I mean, it. when I first smoked pot, you know, I think I, uh, it was like eighth or ninth grade. Um, and I smoked it, and it was like, eh, you know, it was, it was all right. But started taking little pills, drinking. As soon as I started drinking, it was like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that pain. I didn't know my mother. I would talk to my mother maybe once a year, once every two years on the phone. And she had a southern accent because she lived down south, you know, and that's all I knew of her. Yeah. And, you know, I had experiences in high school where I would drink so much before school that I would black out and get thrown out of school. And just, I don't know, when I, drugs and and drinking a lot, it just took away that knot in my stomach. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I have social anxiety, all PTSD from what I went through, right? All this stuff. So liquid courage. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and I'm not saying you know I'm not going to sit here and say that there's something wrong if you drink because there really isn't. It's anything to excess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something that could dominate your life. Yeah. And from day one, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Like, that right. was it for me. I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be the best at it. Yeah. So I was the one <laughs> blacked out at the party. Mm-hmm. I was the one taking seven Xanax and, you know, end up in the back of a police car constantly yeah. out throughout high school. So I barely graduate high school, um, starting to sell weed. And I was like, well, what does everyone else do? You know, I'll go, I got to go to college, you know. Right. So. I go to college, I'm thrown out within six months, <laughs> selling drugs, drinking, you know, just trashing. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I, I wasn't there for the right reason. I was there to get out of my house, Yeah, get my aunt off my back. You know, yeah. you yeah. can only imagine what she had to put up with. Oh, God. I was cold to her because of what I went through. Right. And she's trying to raise me. And the crazy thing is she was always telling me about Jesus. And yeah. I said, I want no part of your Jesus because I remember what that priest did, did to me. Oh, yeah. I want nothing Jeez. to do with that. And there was a time, and I remember this when I was younger, that I, I used to pray all the time because I really believed in God, but all the stuff that had happened, I said, he must hate me. And I remember saying, I'll never let anyone get close to me ever again because you allowed this to happen to me. And I said, I'm, from this point on, I'm turning my back on any kind of God. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. So that was really the beginning of my 
of my uh, downfall. Wow. Because I just started trying to, I mean, just I, look, when I look back now, I can honestly say, let me give you an example. And this is not to be extreme, but I had like screws loose in my head. Mm -hmm. So I would get like wasted and then I would order an eight ball of Coke and everyone thought I was ordering it for everyone and I would <laughs> eat it. Jeez. I would eat the whole eight ball in front of everyone because I, I like that shock value. I, yeah, like I liked it. when people said the attention. Oh, he's great! Yo, yeah. he, he's the craziest. Yeah, yeah. I want to be the so, craziest. That's so crazy. Like that's how I was throughout high school. Like remember, yeah. I was like the crazy he kid at guy, school, yeah. but I was like the sober crazy kid at school. I, I just made a note. Like I didn't get into drugs and alcohol or anything like that until after high school because of, of the preaching mom did about like. Yeah. And I the same thing. I didn't want that. I didn't want to go down that road because we grew up with dad. Right. Uh, you know, not being there several nights or whatever the yeah. case may be, plates being thrown and, you know, just the trauma of um, going through everything growing up. Um, so I, I was like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. But then that one party, I was like, oh, let me try this drink and then let me try this blunt. And then I'm the crazy kid at school, invincible, like times, times 10. 10. Yeah, and 10 it's like, whoa, he's so crazy. Bit. I totally would have eaten an eight ball in front of everybody for yeah. the shock value. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. just, that's so sort of crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I Your look back, body. like, when I look back for me, you know, I was the type that was like, all right, the party's over, but I'm, I want a bag of Zannies for mm -hmm. a week. Like, I want to do this all week. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just didn't, I didn't understand addiction. I mean, it was all throughout my family. Excuse me. But I didn't understand it. I didn't know what, what it meant. You know, to me, it was like, oh, remember that movie where that guy was smoking crack and he lived under the bridge and he was like, you know, pooky right. or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand, like, that's not how it works. Uh -oh. That's not addiction. Addiction's not the homeless guy. I mean, it can be that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the world we live in now. So fast forward, I get thrown out of uh, college and I just, I found another guy who got thrown out of college and he had a van and we decided we were going to just travel the United States and live in this van. <laughs> it sounds so, like something I would do. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. you ever been on couchsurfing.com? Yeah. <laughs> we talked about that before. You used to couch surf. Yeah, that, that's it's crazy. That's all you need. That's all yeah. 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 I mean, it was fun, you know. It, yeah. Yeah. It was fun and it was a great experience. I'm glad I did it when I did because mm -hmm. I lived, we did that for four or five years. I mean, I've lived all, I lived in the Grand Canyon, Arizona, Baja, Maine, uh, Pennsylvania, you know, Key Lago, Florida, just like everywhere. All, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every side just of a, anywhere yeah. we could think about going, we would go. But the crazy thing about it, you know, you always say hindsight's twenty twenty. When I look back, I was running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was running from myself is what I was yeah. doing. Yeah. And as soon as I got a couple painkillers, uh, yeah, that, was, that it. was it. I yeah. said that and this is the guy I tell this story all the time. I tell it in schools, actually. I go in, you know, go in a lot of schools and share my story. And I say, you know what it was? When I took those painkillers, I was like, I just found God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It made me feel close to God. I was like, this is what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. I remember saying, I want to do this every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every day. So I get my paycheck. I was living in Key Lago. I, this is back when you cash a paycheck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just Jeez. Ben Moen. Yeah. <laughs> Walk to the bank, you know, like, yeah. um, take the bus. But I would put the money out, the cash, and I had, you know, it started out as rent. That's for rent. That's for booze. That's for uh -huh. pills, you know, and this will be for food. And then it turned into, well, I can pay half the rent. His for the pills, mm -hmm. and then it just turned into I'm probably yes. gonna get out thrown out sooner or later, so I'll just his for the pills, yeah, 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 you know. And I would wake up sick like I had the flu, and I just didn't realize what that was, you know, because yeah. I didn't know addiction, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'm like, why, well, especially I feel like the crap, pills. but I know the when I call pills. my man, yeah, I, this is like a miracle thing, yeah, <laughs> they should this should be like the cure to the flu, or the <laughs> yeah. Cold. yeah, you this think you like like discovered Tal something, Tylenol. Yeah. you know, what's interesting about that is uh. Um, they used to sell heroin, like as a as a cough suppressant, in medication. Really? Yeah. Did you know that? No. Yeah, they used to sell her actual heroin. That's kind of like the old, uh, like the you know, you give your kids whiskey to get them to stop. Coughing it was the same back, yeah. back in the day. You can Google it. I mean, they show the bottle. It says heroin right on it. I mean, really? so so I'm I'm you know kind of doing that whole thing and not real realizing I'm in addiction and I'm living. In the Keys, I'm pottying just constantly, barely paying my rent. 
Um, I'm young now. I'm 21. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you're right in your prime though of all that. Yeah, just good, good. And I was also in my in the prime of nothing's off limits, right? We could just no. talk about anything. Oh yeah. So no, yeah. this was right around the same time that the internet started booming, oh, yeah. and I d- discovered online pornography. Oh yeah. And oh, that yeah. for me was like that was really my first addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, like. And it was interesting because it always connected the two, like porn and drugs or like sex. Just always feel wanted good, to get feel good. drunk, have sex with whoever I could, and then <coughs> fill myself with as many drugs as I could find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You sex, know? drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that was it. And that's yeah. when the drugs were good, too. Yeah. Back in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, we used to have those roll parties on the weekends. Every yeah. weekend, it was, it was the same thing. The mush, this is, this the is acid. acid. Yeah, this is going to the, the, the ecstasy. And then, and then it was like you got buddy buddy with your guy, so it was like oh, I'll pay you back next time. And then so he'd front you some, and then I pay you back next time. And then you felt bad, or you're going to get like uh, you know ordered on you or something. Like I yeah, gotta pay guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're running. Or, that, that or then you become the guy. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. So that lead that that's a good segue into. So I'm living in the Keys. And I'm taking Laura tabs, you know. You can only take so many of those with the aspirin and all this stuff unless you, like, do it your cold. liver to be. Yeah, you can, like, sure. get the stuff out of it, which you, like, I'm impressed that people, like, figure this stuff out. Drug drug addicts and they're, like, scientists. They are literally yeah. like, wow, determined scientists. Things yeah. people can do. Yeah. Yeah. You think of what they could do if they applied themselves. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. just picked the wrong path. Yeah, no, um, right. So, so uh, there was this guy down there, and I had a... I had a watch. I can't remember what kind of watch it was, but he was like, man, that's a nice watch. I'll give you a bag of Oxycontin for it. And I was mm. like, what's Oxycontin? And he was oh, like, God. man, it's good. It's real good. Oxy 40s, I remember. Holy. So, so I trade him this watch for the, like, I mean, this is crazy because you know what they were worth at the end of the little run there. He gave me a bag of like 20 Oxy 40s for this watch. And I, I, I had a cousin that lived up north and I was talking to him, you know, I was raised by my aunt. So I grew up with my cousin. Right. right? He was like your brother. Or yeah. He was yeah. basically like, he was my brother. We grew up in the same house. We did everything together. Um, and he really was a little bit different than me. He was good at sports. He was popular. Um, just a different type. I was the, always the one in trouble. The party one. Yeah, yeah. And he wasn't. Um, but slowly he started getting into stuff too. So I called him. I said, man, I got these things. I don't know what they are. You know, oxies, and he and he was like, "Yeah, I heard they're around here too. Um, just be careful with them, you know." And then I talked to someone else, and they were like, "Yeah, you just take the coating off and you snort it, I was right?" Just about to say so that. I'm, in, I remember this. I'm on my way back. I was leaving Key Largo, going back to Boston. I snorted an oxycotton forty. I laid down in the bed. I felt like I was floating, and I was like, "This is again is like the best feeling I've ever felt my yeah. whole life. Yeah. This is it. I want this forever." Yeah. And so I got back home, living with my aunt again, and I started becoming an oxy addict, and I had to get oxys just to survive. Yeah. And so you've seen the movie The Town. Yeah. Ben Affleck. Uh, ben Affleck. Oh yeah, yeah, They're yeah. Robbing yeah. the pharmacies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was uh, Charlestown, which I live. I grew oh, up right wow. next to Charlestown. So all the oxies that were getting robbed out of pharmacies were floating into where I was living. I mean, I didn't know one person that didn't get on oxies in Boston. Yeah. I mean, every friend. I know so many people that died. So um, I started doing eighties. They're eighty bucks Ooh. a piece at yeah, the time. Dollar of, yeah. yeah, eighty dollars mm-hmm. for one pill. I'm doing five what? a day. So now, of course, I'm fast forwarding a little bit. I'm in twenty six, maybe or whatever at this point. Um, and I said, you know what? I can't afford this. I can't yeah. hold a job, and they're really expensive. So let me start selling them. You know, just right. like then I can, if I sell twenty, then I can do five for right. free you yeah know? oh yeah so dangerous yeah i mean so i started selling them and i was doing 580s a day just to get out of bed like i remember this was before i found the needle of course right, right. um so i'm snorting all this powder just a function it wasn't even like getting high um mm. 2004 i'm going to i was gonna make 20 bucks off this deal like, I was selling this to the, some girl that had a baby in her car. She called me and said, hey, why don't you come outside the, you know, that's outside of where I live. She's calling me to, like, down Boston or something. I'm, I live in Revere. And I should have had a red flag, but, you know, it's yeah. like, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, 20 whatever. bucks, 20 I'm bucks. coming. Yeah. yeah. So I get there, and um, 
I, I'm like, well, she got the baby with her for like, why do people do that? I mean, it drives yeah. me nuts, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, but who cares? Here you go. Yeah. And then, you know, cops pop out of the bushes, guns. Uh. And I thought, I thought I was getting set up to get robbed. Oh, so yeah. I'm going to reach in my pocket to like throw the money out and throw the pills out. And the guy drags me out of the car. He's like, you reach in your pockets again. I'm going to kill you. Mm. And he takes, he was dressed plain clothes, all tatted up. Now it's pouring rain out. I got guys and wife beaters all around me with guns. And I'm thinking, you're she, getting robbed. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting robbed. You're still not under, yeah, you still don't, I don't get it because they're under cover, yeah. So he puts me on the ground. My face is in a puddle. He puts his knee in my back and he, you know, they got it on the necklace. He pulls the badge out, mm. drops it on the back of my head. He's like, you're going to do five years. Mm. And at that point in my life, that was the first time that I ever said, I think I might have a problem. Mm-hmm. I, I think I might. You still I didn't. Think. I got inside Jeez. the paddy wagon, back of the, the cop truck. And I was thinking, I hope they don't find that one in my sock. Because if I can reach can, it, yeah, I can take it. it. Yeah. It's all I cared about. I had someone come uh, bomb me out. And uh, first thing I did was go get high. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And then I found out, of course, in my life that... Now, at this point, I was doing weird stuff. Like, I would get so high, and then I would ask people about God. I don't know. It sounds crazy, yeah, no. but I was like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> like seeking totally something. Totally get it. Yeah. I just wanted, yeah, yeah. I wanted to get out of this so bad, and I couldn't. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out this hold it had on me. Um, so, so I'm. I get out. I'm doing the same thing, and um, obviously, if I'm doing the same thing, I can't take the drug tests. Right. You know, I'm on the color code. I got to call every uh, day. Yeah. yeah. Your color's orange. Okay, now I got to go buy that detox drink. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're I mean, still high. yeah, no, I'm still high. <laughs> yeah. So I figured out in the system, if you tell them you want to go to rehab, they won't put you away for the rest of your time. They'll let you go to rehab and try to get help, mm. now especially. So I started playing that game. Mm. Oh, I want help. I, he, you didn't like, really. No. You just wanted you're just to saying stay the right free. Things. Well, it's, it's like a paradox. Way deep down, I wanted help. Mm-hmm. Right. A little bit further up from that, I really didn't. I wanted to get high. Yeah. And I'm saying that I want help. Uh-huh. So there's a, there's a part of me that did, but I wasn't ready. So I went to rehab, and I had this girl in this rehab. She was like, I can write scripts to Oxy's easy. Let's go. I got the book at the house. So I leave this place with her. She informs me. We're on the train because you can take a train everywhere up there. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, I, w- I was just saying that, but I can, you know, I'm a heroin addict. I can get us dope. And I was like, oh, I said I would never do that. Yeah. She was like, you don't have to. I'll do it for you. And I was like, wanting to get high so bad, I said, okay, let's do it. Yeah. So we go. She loads it up, hits me, and I'm, again, what do you think I said? Heaven. This God, is it. Yeah. This is it. You ever touch that needle? I mean, it's almost like there's, it's going to take a divine act to come out of that because that is the best feeling a human, I think, can ever feel. And so I became a heroin addict for five years uh, in and out of rehabs. I've been to 20 rehabs. I've been to five psychiatric units. Told me I'm schizophrenic. Uh, I've been arrested multiple times. I've seen people overdose in front of me. Um, I have family members overdose, friends overdose, uh, and die. Um, and I mean, it's, it's, when I look back at it now, it's, it's very sad to me how something could take a whole neighborhood of kids who grew up just playing stickball, mm. playing yeah. street hockey. Like a plague. Yeah. yeah. Like it just swept the whole place. Yeah. And you got to look in people's eyes, you know? Yeah. So fast forward, I, I get uh, the, my girlfriend at the time, I got her pregnant, and she, was, she didn't do drugs. She was always praying for me, and I moved in with her and stole all her money and got her pregnant and then mm. dropped it like... I'm just telling the truth. I yeah. dropped her yeah, off at a homeless yeah. shelter when I left. Um, and I say that because it's the truth. And you do shit you're not proud of when you're in your addiction. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And now, so before this, so, okay, so I get in a Greyhound bus and come to Alabama to go to a place called the Foundry. Mm-hmm. And I get to the Foundry and I get all this stuff in my mind, like... I got a baby on the way. I'm not talking to her mother. Uh, I screwed up everything in my life. So there was a time when I got there, it was like two days. Now I'm in Coleman, 
Okay, lost in the Coleman. <laughs> Coleman. There's no culture well, shock there. Holy shit! Mm. So y'all don't know nothing about Coleman. No. I mean, it, I was like, wow, that's, this really does exist. It's a lot of meth, uh, <laughs> clam chowder, yeah. and cows. Yeah. yeah, but you know what's what's crazy? It's excuse me. It was exactly what I needed. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. to me, I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. I don't work on a farm. We're in a farm. Man, what's <laughs> <Yeah>. a farm? <laughs> so I get there, and there was one night where just the weight of the world's coming down on me, not because I'm a victim, but because of my choices. Mm. And I said, I'm going to, it, it was the middle of the night. The guy that was in the bunk underneath me remembers this night. If you ask him today, he's, we'll probably see this. I got down on the bunk, and I said, I'm going to go find an electrical cord, and I'm going to hang myself. Mm. Because I can't do this anymore. Wow. I was. This is rehab number twenty-one. Jeez. I'm falling apart, and I said, I found an electrical cord, and I looked at the door of the bunkhouse. It was like three in the morning, and I said, God, if you're real, have that door be locked. And I don't know if the door is locked every night or what. And I went to that door, and the door was locked. Mm-hmm. And I said, Okay, if I feel this way tomorrow, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Because I was going to go find a tree and hang myself. And the next day, one of the counselors came up to me and he said, man, you were on my heart all night, and I just want to share this scripture with you. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, to prosper you and to give you hope. I had heard that a million times, but I just broke down Jeez. weeping on the floor. It was the first time I ever felt loved. Yeah. And, and people have been probably trying to love me my whole life. Yeah. I couldn't receive it. I yeah. didn't know how there's a wall up, you know. So from that point on, my life is, has not been perfect. I've relapsed multiple times, you know. So I graduate from the foundry, meet my wife. So this is a crazy story. So she's in rehab. Mm-hmm. I'm sleeping on a friend's couch. I just got out of the foundry. I borrow his truck, my buddy, go pick her up at, at the Love Lady Center, we go down to Jefferson County Courthouse, get married. I drop her back off at rehab. <laughs> I give him back his truck because I was living with him at the time. And he's like, what'd you do today? And I was like, oh, I got married. Uh, and he's cool. like, get out of my house. You're a psychopath. <laughs> Why um, would you do that? <laughs> yeah. So, and that's like a crazy long story, but just the way we met and stuff like that. Um, so to, we get a little apartment and I'm still not. I, so once my daughter was born, I, I didn't talk to her. Because I just, if I had to be honest, I was scared. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know what to say. And so I blamed it on her mother, you know, I don't want to talk to her because of her and and she's this and and whatever. And it was really because I was afraid to be a man Mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to say to her. And and all this stuff kind of happened around the same time. So I get a, two years go by, we're living in Alabama, we got an apartment and I hadn't talked to anyone in Boston, like, because when I left, I said, I'm cutting everything off. Just, I have to go figure this out. So two years went by. Well, my aunt, who's like my mother, sends me an email and she just says, call me. Now, she didn't say, are you okay? What's going on with you? She's like, call me. Yeah, something's wrong. Yeah. So I was like, okay, here we go. So I get on the phone and I said, you know, to her, I was like, hey, it's me. I'm fine. I'm actually doing good. I'm just um, sorry I haven't called or whatever. And I just hear breathing. And I said, do you need me to call an ambulance? I don't know if she had a heart attack because I called her. I don't know yeah. what's mm-hmm. happened. And I said, are you okay? And all I can hear her say is, Michael's dead. And it's your brother, our cousin. Yeah. Oh, man. And... At the, uh, sorry. Yeah. At the, at the time, I wanted to believe it was uh, a family friend, maybe someone else, someone older, but I knew deep down in my heart, and I, uh, you know, hung up the phone. I said, I can't talk to you right now, and I just sat in that room for two weeks drinking, found some lower tabs, just went nuts. I was like... This is you mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. This is you again. And uh, that was really difficult for me. It was a really hard thing to overcome. But through that, mm. I began to look at life and how short it is. And 
look into the truth and uh, seek the truth above all things. And the truth about me was I could say whatever I want, but I wasn't a good person. You know, I abandoned my daughter. I was afraid of that whole situation. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to just live the best I can. And if it falls apart, then so be it. But I pick up the phone and I call my daughter, who I named Serenity, yeah. <laughs> ironically. Wow. Which So I talked to her and she just said one word, daddy. And I'm again like, ah, mm-hmm, you know. Yeah. So, um, and that had, that's been like, I guess, seven, seven years now, six or seven years. Um, so, you know, with, with this life trying to, trying to be, you know, not do drugs when I, when I feel bad, it comes with a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. You know, there was a time when I went to Boston where I had a Bible and I already knew about God and I'm sitting there reading the Bible and I'm emptying a bag of heroin into a spoon Mm. and I'm looking at the Bible thinking, are you, is this real? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just don't let me die, God. Don't let me die this time. Yeah. And then I wake up 45 minutes later with the needle in my arm. I mean, because I didn't understand, like, I had a role to play in mm. this. Yeah. Yeah. It's not magic. It's not like, God grant me the serenity. And then he's not a genie. It's right. not like, now you will be great. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like, you it's still got an active role to play in all this stuff. And the one thing I didn't understand, and I couldn't, I had a wall up, was that God had a plan for my life. Mm-hmm. That concept to me never would, even though I, if, even when I was doing good, it couldn't penetrate that wall that I have built. God doesn't like me. Mm-hmm. He may help me get sober, but he doesn't, there's no plan for me. Yeah. I woke up every day like that for 30 years of my life. Yeah. And then I started praying. I said, God, if you got a plan, show me what it is. Show me what it is I want to know. I started seeking God with all my heart, and he began to show me. Yeah. Not through some audible voice, not through um, a burning bush, right. but he brought people. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You know, we have, we have a lot of good plans, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, I looked at you guys' podcast, you know? <laughs> it's a lot of fun stuff, and then I started seeing, like, people posting, like, this is really making a huge difference in my life. Yeah. yeah. You know, like... And the plans b- being revealed in this whole thing. We just thing. said this in the last podcast uh, when we had a guest on yesterday about how just this, like, we started off this just for fun. And now it's like God's plan. Like, this is just, I would have never in a million years guessed 30, 30 episodes ago that we would be sitting here with you, first of all, but like just talking, talking about, about this, this and yeah. like actually opening up about. Because it's food pie. It was something we don't talk about. Right. Oh, my God. I'm just, I'm like still trying to take all that story. As you just said, dang. Yeah. Well, what's, what's amazing is that everyone feels the same way you do mm-hmm. and I do. Yeah. Like whether, I always say this, whether you do drugs or not, you have the same choice to make when you wake up. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you do right or wrong. What do you, you know, so. You even it, like one of the things I always try to keep in mind is like, even God can't change the past. So it's like the things that are done are done. And, you know, you got to like keep moving forward. And it's just that choice every day to move forward in the right direction or the wrong one, you know? Yeah. So, um, so I kind of look at it like this. People ask me like, how, so how long has it been, you know? And I don't go to AA and I go to actually a home fellowship. It's a, a church and we're all believers and, um, I've I've relapsed so many times that I'm so sick of starting over that I'm like I got 24 hours. I chose to come here today instead of buy pills. Like yeah. I hope it's like that tomorrow, but I'm not I'm not having any expectations. I'm gonna just do the right thing when I get there, yeah. which is tomorrow. You know I've relapsed on heroin. I mean I'm just being yeah, real. Yeah. You know? I've done things to people that I'm like, really? And I'm saying that I believe in God, like, and I'm doing things like, and it's just yeah. this constant refinement process, you know? Yeah. It's like being refined in the fire. It burns out impurities, yeah. you know? So. I, oh man. Jeez. That's it, it's terrible crazy. stuff. When you're talking about like, your relationship with God and, and when you were talking earlier about, um, that you felt like he, hated you you know like you weren't one of the, his people 
you know, that's that hits home with me. I know, Cullen, you've mm-hmm. always been kind of involved with the church and stuff, but I, I hadn't. And I remember being a kid and everything that we had gone through with Dad. And I remember feeling that same way. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I remember, because we we didn't, as a family, grow up in the church. It was only on Easter Sunday or Christmas Eve that we ever dressed up and went to church. And I was going through high school and like the, just the pressure of everything and wanting to turn to the, you know, because you hear all my friends were, you know, oh, I'm so high today, or I've just drank of whatever before I got here. And I was finding myself like starting to like wanting, wanting to experience this feeling or whatever the case may be. And I remember going into dad's room one night after he'd been drinking all night and he was sitting there reading his book like he always did every single night. Smoking a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette, reading his book in his own bed because mom and dad didn't necessarily sleep together. And if they did, you knew they had a good night. You know, it wasn't like they, because he was bonding with another thing or substance. But, um, I remember just breaking down in tears and being like, well, why don't we go to church? And he kind of beat around the bush, I remember. I was like 17. I mean, I was old enough to like actually hold an argument, like a question, like a conversation with him about it. And um, I was like, why don't we go to church more? And he was like, eventually he said something like, well, if that's what you want to do, we'll start doing it. And I don't think we ever did as a family or anything, but I, so I started going down that path, got saved and all that. And, um, then like, it just ended up just completely 180. And after uh, I, you know, you were just I, going through the motions, I was just going right? through the motions, yeah. just going through what my friends were doing, you that's know, what your doing girlfriend this did on Sunday. So that's where you went. Right. And then Sunday, I, yeah. I flipped 180 and kind of going back to the, um, um, the, the oxys and stuff. We uh, this was like probably one of the eye opening experiences, and I don't think I've ever talked about this really. But um, me and my old roommate, we got into it, and we were kind, of, kind of talking about the ecstasy parties every weekend. It was like we're going to uh, Cullen's place, and uh, we're going to you know do these role parties, and we had mm-hmm. each room like dedicated for different Your things. black lights, black in here, lights yeah. here, uh, the vaporizers in here, you know, and the just glow lights in here, and you'd go did like a scavenger hunts and stuff like that. I mean, it was stupid. But um, uh, it just was more drugs in and out of the house. Yeah. More, um, uh, you, you were just around it, more more different drugs. Mm-hmm. I remember like almost blowing my face off looking at a firecracker on um, acid one night. Like we took a tap. Like I'd never done that before and I've never done it since because I was just like miserable for like a week after. But I was just sitting there looking at a firecracker and it exploded. And I'm just like, oh, that was cool. Yeah. But I mean, look, looking back, I'm like, I almost killed myself. <laughs> like just, um, but the no, there was, shit. there was a, um, we worked at Red Lobster and there was a. You and Nicki Minaj. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there was a, but there was a lady in there and she like, again, just got us introduced. She, I think she was on work release or something. Yeah, and um, yeah, she got us introduced things. to the Oxy, uh, the, what are they called? What were they called? Oxycontin. Oxycontin. Yeah. So, OCs. Yeah. OCs, yeah. And um, she's like, yeah, just take this into the bathroom and just run into the water, get that coating off, and you'll be good. And I was like, what are you, what's this? You know, is it yeah. something new? But then again, it's it was heroin like, in a pill form. It's that yeah. same feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then I would be in the back room, you know, there's always that restaurant back room where nobody's, there's like, why do they even have this room back here? Laid out on the, on the booth, in the booth, you know. Mm-hmm. So one, sleeping off the night before, but two, I'm just so messed up on everything else. And then um, there was another time where I was on my way to work and um, the car broke down on the way to work and I'm sitting there on the side of the road. And my first thought, like you said, and I I had a little bit of cocaine on me. And so I was like, just get rid of it. So I just broke it up, got rid of it right then and there. And then worried about how to get to work and how to do, you know, deal with my actual responsibilities. And that, um, you know, over time, I remember getting in the shower, my nose was bleeding and I was like, okay, this is, this something's not right. Like this is getting too deep, you know, like eye opening, that, that kind of stuff. Never did get into the knee. Like I've, like I said, I've never get into the drugs. I never did get into the needles and stuff, but I would have if I'd have kept going and hadn't had that like, um, influence and revelation of like, okay, I need to stop in my wife now. Like I, I always say she saved me, um, but, yeah. um, it could have gone a, d- a totally different yeah. way. I've oh, known so many totally people that, um, 
and I was blessed to never have gone that way, that way either. But um, it made me so sick when I did it that I because mm-hmm. I, I I didn't do the. Some people I guess react to the pain medicine. If you gotta push through being sick till you like it. Or you try it and you're sick and you're like, I don't want to do that anymore. First time you it know? made me like, uh, they're like, lure, t- lure tabs, l- l- lure same tab, thing with yeah. Katie. They make her nauseous and my wife, they make her nauseous and all that, but they make me like get crap I done. I wish they made me nauseous. Yeah, yeah right. That, that was the thing. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. Everybody's like, how do you do that? I'm like, how do you not do that? Well, it's the same right. way some people like, like, you know, my wife, she was addicted to meth. Mm-hmm. She didn't even like any kind of opioids. You know, it's yeah. almost yeah, like yeah. when you hear people say like, I experimented with drugs. The point of an experiment is to come to a conclusion. If you like which it. one you and want more. There's, there's a drug for every... I feel like there's a drug for every human weakness. Like, mm-hmm. people with low self-esteem, they like Coke. You yeah. know? Yeah. People that had needed deep healing, like I did from trauma, I liked opiates. I mean, it blocks mm-hmm. that part of your pain. life. No more pain. Yeah. So, you know, buying into the counterfeit as yeah. opposed to the healing, mm-hmm. yeah. that was what I had to understand, you know? Yeah. That's so. just crazy. I remember another time I was at the party when yeah, I think you were there, and um, that was another eye-opening experience. There was a, a dealer there. Thank you. Like we we became buddy buddies with all the <laughs> dealers. These guys would come in at, from out of town or from just out of the metro area and rent a hotel for the week or for the weekend just to yeah. sell their dope out of. And um, we ended up, you know. They were so broken and hurt and just wanting validation that they'd be like, so where are y'all going tonight? After we, they realized we were all just kind of cool and chill, and then we'd invite them over. So then you got the dope man at the party with you, yeah. and he's like, you know, gets so messed up that he's putting extension cords, trying to climb down the window because he thinks the hot water heater is about to explode because the cops planted it in the house, all this uh, kind of yeah. stuff. Paranoia. Paranoia all, yeah. Strung out on meth for four, yeah. four or five days. And then uh, this one guy was at, I think, one of the houses you were at too. And this is, Are you talking about the uh, night I come home with the car? No, that was a different night. But this guy had a pinky nail about the, like, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> the <laughs> coke nail. And he yeah. was just sitting there just <laughs> all night. Well, and then... He had a bag of X in one pocket, a bag of Coke in the next. And as demented as it sounds, he freaking just passed out or OD'd or whatever. I don't know what the case was. We were all messed and you up. you took all his drugs? That was my first thought. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, I've instead of there. calling 911 or getting paramedics because I didn't want to get busted, you know, I was like, oh, take there's the nobody well, else well, around let me, here. Let, let me, me grab them and go. Let me tell you this. So my cousin, you know, passed away. Mm-hmm. from a heroin overdose and he was with some buddies of ours instead of calling the, the ambulance they dragged him out in the hallway and locked the door and everyone left yeah. they found him the next day that's i mean that's just sick it's hard to forgive some yeah. of that stuff yeah um how much longer do we have i have a question oh we can keep going Go man ahead. okay we got all Cause day. i, I want to kind of get into the hope part of it you okay. know yeah, like yeah. what yeah so you know when i was I was kind of floundering around when I was here. I just didn't know what I was supposed to do. I was waiting tables. And, of course, waiting tables came with every, every waitress was whispering behind me, I got Percocets. I got That's dope. what Red Lobster, yeah. I got yeah. this. I mean, and exactly. I was like, finally I got to the place where I was like, I don't care if it's making money or not. I, I told my wife, I said, I cannot do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I, I quit. I just walked out of that job. Um, there was a lot of miracle stuff that happened that I knew God had his hand on. Um, we didn't have a vehicle at the time because we didn't have any money. We, mm-hmm. She gets our, you know, we, yeah. we're just starting out. And I had someone come in and I, and I told them my story, you know, just whatever. Just, oh, yeah, this, this, this. And um, she comes back in six months later to the restaurant. And she sits in my section and she's like, do you remember me? And I was like, uh, I see a lot of people, you know. Yeah. I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. um, of course, how are She's you? like, well, I, I want to tell you this. God... God told me to give you this. And she handed me $3,000 and said, I'm going to drive you right now to buy a vehicle. What? And I was like, okay, I didn't, I do, I shouldn't yeah. give me the money. She said, I'm taking you to get a car. And so I went with her and bought a car. The next day, her phone was turned off. And I have no idea. Dang, I got chills on that one too. Right? I mean, she didn't, I mean, it was the craziest thing ever. So, <clears throat> There were things that happened like that, um, but in that process, I said, you know what? Once my cousin passed away, I said, I want to spend my life trying to make a difference. Yeah. That's what I want to do. 
And I started a nonprofit called The Bridge Standing in the Gap. And when you start a nonprofit and you don't have any income, it becomes very difficult because you got to try and raise money as well as do the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was very naive. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can do this all myself. And I just couldn't. And yeah, it's too much. So after two years, um, I found the Addiction Prevention Coalition, and they uh, said, we'd like to hire you. Uh, I taught myself how to do videography, graphic design, uh, audio stuff, things like that. And at the time, I kind of, like, I, I spoke in two schools, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I kind of liked it, but I was like, I'd rather not do it, mm -hmm. but I will do it if they ask me. Mm -hmm. And then so I said, well, this needs to be part of my nonprofit. This was back when I was doing the bridge. And I would call places and they wouldn't even like, and they would be like, no, we're all set. We don't, you don't need to come yeah. to this place. We don't, I couldn't get people to let me come. Yeah. <laughs> speak. Who, who are you? Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. like, are you, are you in Boston calling me? What is the deal? Yeah. So, um, so fast forward, I'm trying to be patient. And now with APC, Addiction Prevention Coalition, like, I don't, I'm not there anymore. God has moved me on. That season is over, but I was there for five years. Mm -hmm. This is the craziest thing because this has to be him. So in that time, I've been on the news over 50 times yeah. on TV. I've been on the radio 35 times. Um, I interviewed the attorney general of Alabama. Like, yeah. I spoke to groups of, I, at one of the walks we had, it was 4,000 people there. I got to share my story. Like, yeah. stuff that I was like, this has to be God because I tried my hardest mm -hmm. and all of a sudden all these doors are starting to open up and I'm people are asking me to come now. Yeah. I don't, yeah it's yeah. not me. You know, yeah. what am I doing though? Like, cause that's a big question. Well, what were you doing at this point? I was waking up every day and I was saying, God, show me what you have for me today. Is it a podcast? <laughs> the number two podcast in the world don't tell mom <laughs> i mean it really is that it because if it is the, if it's from you then i want to go do it yeah. i want to know you know and now that is the way i live my life i'm not perfect i make mistakes but i every day i'm like what is it what do you want me to do that's amazing you know, and you try to follow that path as best we as best as broken human beings mm -hmm. can yeah it's a beautiful thing when you wake up and ask you know, and I'm not, this isn't, I don't want anyone, I'm not preaching. This is what I believe. This is what worked for me. Um, but when you wake up and ask, when I wake up and ask the creator of the universe, what's your plan for me? Mm -hmm. And then I get a message from <laughs> Brittany. On Facebook. Like, hey, do you want to come on this podcast that's like all 90 stuff like you like? I mean, it's almost like you know the you with the Goonies poster. Well, you know the, the, and this is crazy, but the Bible says God knows the desires of your heart. That's mm -hmm. insane. I probably would not have come had I not looked and saw all this '90s stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, really. Yeah. But he knew. Yeah, that's what I feel like. I feel like he knew what was going to draw me to that. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Now I own a videography company. I've stepped out on my own doing that, and I have some clients, uh, a ministry downtown. They do unbelievable work called Hope Inspired Ministries. I do videos for them. I mean, you want to talk about the gospel being lived out. They, they teach people job skills. They help them find jobs. They yeah. help them find apartments. I mean, they really invest in these people's lives. Because awesome. any, anyone can go out and complain about society and be like, yeah. well, look at the culture. And the, I mean, but what are you doing for them? Right, right. right. They're actually doing something. That's so awesome. I do a uh, video for them, and I also work at uh, my wife's salon. Okay. And so this was a big transition. So I went from being on TV a hundred times to washing women's hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to be humble because he was saying, yeah. here's what I want. Here's how it's going to work. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, so you it's interesting. I like actually doing happy it. Happy wife, happy life. That's hey, right. She does get there <laughs> yeah. and air. You watch well, it. and he had He's mentioned. got a lot of experience. <laughs> he yeah. mentioned earlier. Um, that, I'm just you know, jealous. <laughs> I'm like, that's why I do it. Because I'm you like, know, like, like oh, living oh, through them. So nice I'm like, this is so nice. But ironically, they like, <laughs> one lady was like, I've, that's the best shampoo that I've ever gotten and I'm like, I don't know. I just, I'm supposed to be there. Like, and then we get to spend more time together. Yeah. Because yeah. we're, you know, yeah. doing this. I mean, it's like before it was, I was leaving at five mm -hmm. and I'm getting home at two 
and she's getting home at seven. Mm-hmm. So we got this short amount of time. Well, now we get to do this stuff together and laugh yeah. and, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and That's make jokes good. about hair. Like, I don't have any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, awesome. and you mentioned earlier uh, maybe coming back on the podcast and, like, tag teaming with your wife and hearing y'all's story yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And, and you, y'all starting a podcast or whatever the case yeah. may be. Like She would love so to do crazy. it. crazy yeah. the, yeah. the path that God's led this whole podcast and this whole life. I love the fact that y'all just met and in, in, in the situation in that um, in the time of the lo- of your life that you met each other and that y'all just went out of the courthouse, got married, and y'all just <laughs> kicking it like that. So how long have you been married? Now? Yeah, it, uh, yeah. We just celebrated eight years. Oh, yeah, okay. do we have time for one more quick story? Yeah, yeah of this course. Is, this is crazy. Like I couldn't explain this. Um, so, um, let's see how I want to put this. When I was at the foundry, I shared my story once on mm-hmm. video. And just to be honest, I was a little bit prideful. I was like, yeah, I'm on video. You know, they showed the video and a bunch of people said they liked it. So it made me feel like I'll, you know, like, mm-hmm. hey, look at me. You know, I was previously behind a dumpster in Boston rifling heroin. Yeah. And now I'm like, hey, I'm on the poster at the front. You know, like. Feeling like the man when yeah. you walk through. <laughs> you feel like the man when you walk through, when you walk through the rehab. Yeah. Yeah. I was part of the Get Fresh crew. There's the Danny. There's Danny. Shh. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. I just knew the importance of it, of sharing a story, because I felt like, I feel like someone's story is the key that unlocks someone else's prison. Yeah. Like, you can tell someone something, you can tell someone anything, and they can just dismiss it, but nobody can take your story. Right. Nobody. That's yours. And I feel like that's why we're a lot, we're, we walk through stuff so we can come through, because there's so many people that are looking at this podcast like... I read through the comments, you know, you got some clowns, trolls, but then you get a lot of people saying, you know, for whatever reason, I couldn't get into it, but I always went back to it. And now it just hooked me and God's speaking to me and this stuff, you know, yeah. and that's everything. We find yeah. our footing. So I'm sleeping on my buddy's couch. I graduated the foundry. Mm-hmm. I'm like thinking, now I never owned a computer. Now, you know, I do mm. videography now. <laughs> yeah, right. So never owned a computer. I was working on his computer on his Facebook trying to help him. He owns a Christian bookstore called The Carpenter Shop in Vestavia. Okay. And he's an older guy, a real good friend of mine. Paid half my intake fee. Uh, we having camera issues? I'm just making sure it's recording. I just ran, ran over there. I think it, is it still ticking yeah. over there. Okay, we're yeah. good. Sorry. You're good. All right. um, owns a bookstore. So, yeah, owns a bookstore. So he's like, man, let me help you get a computer, you know, so you can work on your own computer. So he helps me get a computer. And I was going to get a Sony uh, Vios or something. And I'm looking at him. And for whatever reason, he comes up behind me and he's like, why don't you get a Mac? <laughs> and I was like, because I don't know anything about any computer. Why would I get a Mac? And he's like, I don't know. I just. Why don't you look at them? So I looked at it, and I was like, all right, I'll get a Mac. You know, they're nice. Yeah. So I get it, and it's got video editing software. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is Already it? Already iMovie. Yeah. iMovie. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I got a little flip camera. No, actually, I used a webcam. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to record my story and put it on YouTube. Uh-huh. Right? Nice. So I record my story, put it on YouTube. Well, I took that same video, and I put it on DVDs as a ministry. And I said, you know, I'm just going to mail this to rehabs. Like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to mail them the actual DVD and say, God bless you. Here's something if you ever want to watch it or whatever. Yeah. So I mailed it to f- six places, like the Foundry, Love Lady Center, um, other places I can't remember. But so now my wife tells the story better because it was her. But so I mail this stuff out and I'm working in his Christian bookstore one day a week to pay for my cell phone. And so this girl comes in. She's like, hey, I. So, okay, so I started recording other people's stories and putting those on YouTube. Yeah, right? you got the bug. Yeah, you people like, like yeah. overcoming. So I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, let's make this a thing. Like, I'll find people that have overcome addiction and I'll film this story and I'll put it on my YouTube. So I'm doing this. And so this is around the same time that that DVD hits the Love Lady Center. It gets there. Someone has it. Someone comes into the Christian bookstore while I'm working and says, hey, because I did her story. And she says, you need to meet this girl, Haley. You need to put her story on there. And I was like, okay. And, <laughs> and they were like, she's really pretty. And I was like, well, I'm a Christian. I don't care about that. I'm doing this for the, for the Lord. <laughs> right? And I was like, how, how pretty? <laughs> what you look like? So I was like, yeah, I'll film anyone's story as long as they're not like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You yeah. know, i got to kind of feel it out. So I go and I film her story and she's standoffish and I'm like, eh. 
who's this? You know, who she thinks she is? Yeah. Probably because they talked her up, you know? Yeah. So we're both like, who is, ugh, whatever, go. You know, we get your story and that's it. So <laughs> she, rev- so we uh, were supposed to go on a date. I blew her off. She calls me on the phone and said, you're pathetic. I feel bad for you. You have no friends. You sit up there on your computer and do these stories, <laughs> but, you're, but you're afraid of people. And I said, you just like me. And she was like, yeah, I do. So 30 days after that, we're married. <laughs> but in that time, we were hanging out. She reveals to me. She said, I want to show you something. So she pulls out this notebook. Now, I have this photocopied. I will show it to you. It's a notebook. And it says a bunch of prayer stuff. Uh-huh. And it says, Danny Malloy is my future husband. Wow. And I said, what is this? And she said, I walked downstairs at the Love Lady Center. Before I met you, I knew who you were. And your DVD was playing on the TV in one of the groups. And God told me that you were my future husband. I didn't even know who you were. And she said, I went upstairs. I wrote that in my notebook. Huh? And she told her roommates. And they said, you're nuts. Do You mm. don't even know him. Yeah. And then... 30 eight, days later. <laughs> 30, eight, in eight years. Eight years. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And we it was built our credit and, you know, it's just one of those things that... It's amazing. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's, like we said, it's a, you, nobody can take away the story, yeah. you know? And uh-huh. now I have a good relationship with my daughter and her mother. You know, her mother was there for me at my lowest mm-hmm. and she's a great mother yeah. and she has two other kids and she's raising our daughter yeah. uh, the right way. And does great, and I love my daughter. Um, could it be better? Yes, because we could be closer. But right. for what it is, I'm very blessed to have the people I have around me. Uh, they support me at my lowest. So yeah, because she could have said no way, you know, after yeah. everything that happened, no way. And she's, yeah. you know, she's a single mother, and she has a hard time. And I try to help out all I can. And uh, I just, I, I know what that's like because I remember growing up in my yeah. home. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So your daughter's you, you never know your daughter might be watching our vlogs or watching this podcast right now with the way the internet works. This is yeah. crazy. So that's that's it's a good testament. And the, the, golly, the whole story, everything is just amazing. And another I reason I like you is that I've got a Sony Vio and a flip cam that I started with in <laughs> wow. the in the room back there, and I go upgraded wow. to a Mac. <laughs> that's great. So I started out where you were about to go. Yeah. Oh my gosh! That's amazing. Um, you have an amazing story. And, uh, I feel blessed just to be here, be able to sit here and listen to it. You know what I mean? And, I and could hear what you're sit saying. here and talk for another hour well, about all this. My, <laughs> my wife said uh, we were we were watching Phyllis's. Yeah, Phyllis. yeah. And we were watching it, just kind of hanging out and stuff. And she was like, she was like, pause this. She's like, I just had a vision of you on there, and everyone was tearing up. And I was like, <laughs> okay, and then. Leave a comment mm-hmm. if you teared up because that was a powerful story. I was sitting there after you had said the basically climax of your story about Michael and everything, and then it you were saying something else after that, and I wasn't even listening because I started like processing everything again, and I was just like, "Whoa!" Uh, I can't even imagine to like lose somebody. You know, oh that, man, your brother and my brother sitting right here, and I'm so blessed to have him next to me, and yeah. it's to uh, to imagine that you could have lost him, like um. I don't know. I've lost a lot of people, uh, mostly to heroin, because that's they. You know, they liked it. I didn't. I was just mm-hmm. fortunate. I was just the lucky one that just that wasn't my thing. Um, recently, too. recently, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's like it just blows my mind to think that like it was because you're one of those people that like it. It could have been you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so to go through something like that, just you know, it just blows my mind. But to see where you've been and then where you are now is very inspiring. Uh, and I hope that the people that are listening and watching are inspired by it. Uh, that's kind and of, I, I would that's be willing to point. bet you're going to be back on this podcast. And <laughs> yeah. you got to come back. you yeah. got to come back. I'm a, next time I come back, I'm bringing some 90s stuff. I was about to say, before you leave, <laughs> can you show the camera your, your shoes yeah, and your absolutely. shirt? <laughs> if y'all aren't watching. Well, here's the thing. So my wife never heard of Hypercola. <laughs> and I was like, what? You never heard of it? Like, I remember the eighth grade dance. Yeah. We're in Hypercolor, Skids, Pumps. So, you know, 90s. I think thing. I've got a Hypercolor. I think <laughs> I have that. Like, my yeah, wife you know, has that exact same shirt upstairs, I believe. Is, it's supposed to turn colors, but it's, it's like, so old. It's old. It's yeah, broken, it doesn't work. You know? uh-huh. And then I'll show Check out the shoes, y'all. This is like straight up my alley. 
Look at that. <laughs> Can you get a? There you go. You gotta flex. You gotta be flexible. There you go. The little little <laughs> Air pump. Jordan pumps or oh, what are they? Yeah. No Reebok, Reebok pumps. pumps. Yeah, yeah, you jump so hot, so much higher with those. <laughs> well, these these sneakers that were the 1991 Slam Dunk competition yeah. with D Brown when he covered his eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Boston <laughs> Celtics, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Boston Celtics. You know Celtics. what I'm saying? <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh. But I would like to say this, you know, and I talked a lot about God and. Just because I do that or live that way doesn't mean that there's not challenges, there's not struggles, there's not huge mistakes that I make. The beauty of this thing is I wake up every day, every day I wake up and I have the same decision to make I had yesterday and I try to live my life not letting my past dictate my future because that's what I always did. I'm a loser. My family doesn't like me or nobody likes me or I screwed this up or I didn't do that right. And it kept me in this bondage loop. Yeah. It was like mm-hmm. a negative feedback loop. Yeah. So now I, I ask for my purpose. I ask for opportunities. And I'm okay if they don't come right away. Mm-hmm. I have to be patient now. And that's the hottest thing for an addict because yeah. it's like, yeah, give it to I can me. get high right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the biggest thing I had to learn was, no, you got to have patience in life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's deep, deep, one. deep, good stuff from Danny, y'all. This, uh, that, I really appreciate you taking your time and yes. day and and decision to come out here. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. We, well, been, we're not even gonna thank him. Thank God, thank, <laughs> because thank, it was thank his decision. The, well, I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, yeah, this has been cool, and it's just another another um, influence, positive influence in my life that I needed and didn't even know it. So yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. You did say um, in the beginning you liked me. So yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe you kind of I, I spoke just that into existence. I did. <laughs> yeah, manifestation. Yeah, <laughs> just keep talking about the good stuff, and yeah. it happens. But um, yeah, I think First, we'll we'll call it there. I mean, yeah, we're good. No, awesome. We were going to do like a podcast only side, but I think we're we. we that's no, nothing else to say really right now. I'm just like you just got to absorb that. I want everybody that's listening to leave a comment and tell us what you think about Danny and his story and um. Only do you want nice Do you have social? Though. You want to plug or anything or a website or anything? We'll leave a link below to you, uh, what you're talking about uh, with the. Um, what was it you were saying? Well, no, not, he does the videography. Uh, videography or Yeah, I mean, Re- Revelation Visuals is the Facebook page. I mean, I don't, uh, I, you know, I'm not out there yet. So okay. I'm yeah. kind of. But oh. yeah, so go check out, just a little plug, Addiction Prevention Coalition. If you're in Birmingham, they're about to have their end heroin walk, which I played a big role in starting that whole thing. They usually have like four or 5,000 people at Railroad Park. Um, it's February 23rd this year, I think. I'm not involved in it, but get, if you're, you know, involved in some of this stuff, get out there, support them. They yeah. do a great work. So just a little plug there. That's a, awesome. That's actually my due date. So if I'm not there, you'll know why. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you'll know why. Exactly. Thank well, you. Cool. So much Thank for you, Danny. I appreciate and, uh, it. Thank hopefully, you. hopefully, y'all, you know, take something from that and go and uh, seek help if you need it for sure. And, uh, we might have another fun guest next week. I still need to reach out. We got some. Got to get rid of some of the stress. Hopefully, so we'll see what happens. But Muha, don't say too much. No, 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 no that's all. That's all. That's all. Okay. all right. We all love right. you guys. Thanks for Love watching. Y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Two times Tuesday. Two times Tuesday. Peace. Peace. See ya. Peace. <laughs> Dude, that was amazing. <laughs>